A man has always to be busy with his thoughts if anything is to be accomplished. Whenever I found out anything remarkable, I have thought it my duty to put down my discovery on paper, so that all ingenious people might be informed thereof. When I have supped too heavily of an evening, I drink in the morning a large number of cups of coffee, and that as hot as I can drink it, so that the sweat breaks out on me. If by so doing I can't restore my body, a whole apothecary's shop couldn't do much, and that is the only thing I have done for years when I have felt a fever. People who look for the first time through a microscope say, now I see this, and then I see that, and even a skilled observer can be fooled. On these observations I have spent more time than many will believe, but I have done them with joy, and I have taken no notice of those who have said, why take so much trouble, and, what good is it? How little do we discover in comparison of those things which now are and forever will be hidden from our sight. The whole of which I am fully persuaded no one will ever be able to dive into, and to explain their causes and effects. If any person examines by the microscope that part towards the extremity of the spider's body from whence its thread proceeds, he will observe the spot to be, as it were, surrounded by five several protuberances or risings, each ending in a point and altogether forming a kind of enclosure. I've never taught one, because if I taught one, I'd have to teach others. I would give myself over to a slavery, whereas I want to stay a free man. Man comes not from an egg but from an animalcule that is found in male sperm. I must confess. I don't know any tongue but the nether Dutch. We will admit that, out of the mud or sand which is found on the seashore or the beds of our rivers, at low water, shellfish or testaceous animals come forth. But it does not from thence by any means follow that they are produced without any regular course of generation. In rainwater, I observed a small red worm and two other kinds of very minute insects, of those of the larger size, I judged that thirty thousand together would not equal a coarse sand. How inscrutable and incomprehensible are the hidden works of nature!